All right, yeah, welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today is going to be Brawl's Day, and I was actually looking through the list of commanders that we haven't played that are actually not terrible, and uh, I managed to find one. It's one of the lists that I built originally, and it was pretty bad back when I built it before, but that was during Theros Beyond Death. Since then, we've had uh, two new releases into the standard Brawl format, I guess. And, you know, Teferi's gone. I can't quite remember why I didn't like this one or why it wasn't good, but uh, we're going to test it out. We're going to see what we can do with this one. So, Athreos Shroud Veil is going to be our commander of choice. Six mana, four, seven with indestructible. As long as your devotion to white and black is less than seven, Athreos isn't a creature. By the way, this is one of my favorite cards from the set, and it's just... It kind of fell by the wayside. I was very excited for this one. It ended up being mediocre, so pretty happy to get back into this one. At the beginning of your end step, anyway, put a coin counter on another cre another target creature. And whenever a creature with a coin counter on it dies or is put into exile, return that card to the battlefield under your control. So essentially, we can steal our opponent's creatures or we can use our own for their ETB uh, triggers or even just keep them alive if they've got some sort of passive that is very good. So... Uh, as far as this deck is concerned, that's basically all it is. We've got a lot of creatures in our deck that have ETBs that we might want to repeat. We also have a lot of removal so that we can put counters on our opponent's creatures, kill them, and have them enter under our control. It's essentially Ozov control with this one with some nice little top end. We've got Meteor Golem. If you can flicker this one, you get to destroy permanents, which is cool. Uh, Ugin's in here because he destroys permanents. Massacre Worm against Field of the Dead. If our opponent gets a little bit too out of hand, we just slap down a Massacre Worm and win. We can also reuse this ability as well if we can kill our Massacre Worm and then re-enter. Uh, we do have Witch's Oven in here to do that. We're not going to be running Cauldron Familiar because I like having friends. Uh, Liliana Dreadhod General. Six mana, six loyalty. Whenever a creature dies, you draw a card. We can use this to sacrifice two creatures. If we sacrifice two creatures with coin counters on them, uh, then we get to bring them under our battlefield under our control onto the battlefield so you know the minus being synchronous is not necessarily a bad thing here which is pretty good uh we have you know elspeth conquers death cavalier of dawn they kind of speak for themselves uh, the meme card is going to be Mecha Godzilla, the weapon. We've got this one in here. This one gets a choice of many different types of counters. It's also Crystalline Giant if you want to search for it differently, but Mecha Godzilla is where we're going with this one because he's got some sweet, sweet metal abs there and I like him. Uh, anyway, uh, it can get a choice of Flying, First Strike, Death Touch, Hexproof, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, Trample, Vigilance, or a plus one plus one counter on it at the beginning of combat every single turn it's chosen at random we have the ozolith in here which actually kind of goes quite well with coin counters in addition to our mecha godzilla so whenever a creature with counters on it would die or leave the battlefield we put those counters on the ozolith and then the beginning of combat we get to choose where those counters go so if we have coin counters for example and the creature with coin counters dies we can put that on the ozolith and then at the beginning of combat we can put that coin counter on something which is actually kind of important because athreos otherwise cannot do that until uh, the end step, which, you know, sets up some relevant situations to be in. Uh, but really, uh, the rest of the deck is kind of, it's going to speak for itself a little bit. Uh, we've got things like Hanged Executioner as removal. This one's kind of fun as well. Three mana, one, one. You can pay four to exile it to exile a creature, but if it has a coin counter on it, then when you exile the Hanged Executioner, it's going to come back onto the battlefield under your control, so we can reuse uh, the exile target creature clause every single turn, which is cute. I like it. But yeah, everything's just removal other than that, really. And, you know, little bits of card advantage with things like village rights. We can sack a creature, draw two cards, and then reuse the coin counted up uh, token. But yeah, if you do enjoy the content, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get to it. This video is brought to you by the generous support of our wonderful patrons and channel members that you see here. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to cool content like sneak peeks, bonus videos, polls on future content, or access to a personal deck critique from myself every month, then hit the join button down below or check out the Patreon link in the description. With all that said, let's get into the gameplay. Okay, we're in, and we've got some removal early, got some eat to extinctions, our opponent's playing Prankle, which doesn't really have that many targets to go off on. I think this is actually a fine hand. I think this is a fine hand indeed. See what our opponent thinks of theirs. They like theirs, okay. 
weird, but okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to take the planes, I think. So, usually they'll probably have some one drop that they can play, but not today, apparently. Say hello to our opponent, who will probably rope us later down the line. We'll see. All right. Uh, tap land, say goo. And, yeah, I think we're just going to go Midnight Reaper next turn. Ooh, Dreadhorde Invasion's pretty good for Prankle. Means they have a, a target to sacrifice, essentially, when they go into attack. Uh, but we have Midnight Reaper. We have plenty of ways of dealing with Prankle when it gets out as well. Good lord. For some reason, they've just updated Arena and... It basically doubles the audio volume. It wouldn't be Magic Arena without, you know, having a blatantly, disgustingly b huge bug that they can't solve. Alright, so this is a weird one. I think we have to send some damage at Davriel. They'll obviously block with their token. And then regardless, I think how all this is going to go is our opponent is going to make us discard, so we'll just go after Davriel with an Eat to Extinction, I guess. We get to look at the top card, so the draw on their ability is not as good, maybe. Yeah, because I kind of think we want to make them discard. It's a singular discard for them. I'm just going to put that on top. Work our way towards Athreos. Athreos looks pretty good, actually, if we can coin counter up some of their cards. Not necessarily with Dreadhard Invasion out, because their sacrifice can just go on that every time. 100% go for a Rankle here. Really? Okay. Um. Well, it's going to be Land Intervention. Kind of glad I put the planes on top, to be honest. And yeah, let's swing for three. I would really, really love to get Athreos down as soon as possible, because the only thing they can really have is Farrakhan's Libation, which, you know... I'm not going to say that they always have it when they need it, but... Uh, you know what I am. They always have it when they need it. And that annoys me. Okay, so... We could let Prankle actually hit here. It's not the worst thing in the world, though we'd kind of just lose our Murderous Rider anyway. Um, but if we have to sacrifice our Midnight Reaper, we get that draw. I think we'll probably go for just kill Prankle here. Make them work harder for it. You can use Midnight Reaper as a blocker if we absolutely must. Solemn Simulacrum. All right. It does benefit us for sure to be essentially empty-handed. Uh, we do have triple white, we've got triple black, so uh, realistically it's not going to make a difference which one we pick here, I think. And we'll pass. So Solemn is actually a double draw. But I think I want to wait on that. I want to put a coin counter on Solemn. Because then the death and re-entry is actually pretty disturbingly good. And Lazatep Reaver. Alright, so plenty of options for them here. Do we take four? We don't have to. Hmm... I think we'll take it for now. We've got the Solemn Block forever, so... Ooh, Witch's Oven could be pretty good if we don't lose it. And we're going to pass, put a counter on the Solemn. So when that dies or leaves the battlefield, it will re-enter the battlefield. So we get to draw, and then we'll also get to grab a land. So we've got a blocker for that 5-5 five, five, pretty much forever. Which is good stuff. Help yourself. They amass up to a 6-6, six, six, which still does not push through. And it dies, make a 0-1 goat. Okay. 
easiest block of all time. They are up at 6-6 six, six territory with their token, which is... It's a thing. It's not a thing we particularly care about, though. All right, Solemn comes back, grabs the land. We think we got a swamp last time, so let's get a plains this time. And then we get to draw a card. And get a Clatbridge Troll. Not the greatest of draws. This needs seven, I think. Yeah, seven for... the old devotion which we can do right here and let's see if they want me to attack him with my clapbridge troll they have a death toucher so can't see why they would care I do kind of have to be a little bit cautious about giving them tokens I suppose because they might have a little bit of an aristocracy style to their deck Alright, so we get in with our free 4-7 attack here. I think I hold back my Clapbridge Troll. Since their token will be a 7-7. Seven, seven. I'll make them work a little bit harder for it. And again, we'll just do Solemn. All right, so we're going to need a little bit of card advantage, I guess. We kind of have it, but it's not the greatest of card advantage. Hmm. And then, yeah, basically just draw all of our top end stuff. I mean, it's all good. It's a shame we missed out on the Witch's Oven. That would mean that we'd be able to essentially cycle our own counted up tokens, coined up tokens, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to sack Cavalier of Knights, one of the ghost tokens. Ghost tokens? Goat tokens. Ooh, that was a good one. Does take Athreos out of combat, but we already attacked him with it, so we don't care. And then we're going to draw and ramp. Our opponent is improving our draws as we go. Since we get to thin the deck and we're drawing two cards a turn, we went planes last time, so let's do Swamp this time. Remain consistent. D Spark's pretty good. There's nothing in the yard for Cavalier of Knights, so an Ugin minus would be fine there. Yeah, I mean, this turn's pretty great overall. Ugin comes down. We'll just get rid of Cavalier with the minus, I think. Although we could get rid of Dreadhorde Invasion, stop the token from growing that actually has some value yeah sure and then we got d spark cavalier grasp of darkness prankle and yeah i think our opponent realizes that they've had enough i think end step what we do is we put a counter on the cavalier of night and then we d spark it so it comes under our control from there, sacrifice. Honestly, it might just be Solemn at that point. Got 35 cards. We were drawing plenty. Could be Murderous Rider, you sack there, but I like the lifelink. And I do kind of like the Solemn constant trigger as well. It's pretty nice. <laughs> but yeah, if they can't deal with the Ugin, which I'm guessing they couldn't, judging by the fact that they, uh, they scooped it out there, then Ugin will... Definitely take control of that one, and card advantage takes the day. All right, a good first showing for the deck, actually. I like it. All right, we are in. We have removal. We keep. Simply put. Our opponent's playing Yarok the Desecrated. Five mana, three, five doubles, ETBs. It's also a Death Touch lifelink. That's all you really need to know about that one. And let's find out if they're actually playing Magic the Gathering. One of these days, they'll actually uh, fix the matchmaker so that people don't take 10 minutes to get into their games. All right, Scoured Barons we'll just lead off with. I think we're just shocking Godless Shrine for the Arcane Signet to get as close to Athreos early as we can. I don't think our life total early is going to be all that relevant. So get go Signa into Alcide here. We can also make up some of that lifelink. 
So that shock is not as bad. And Paradise Druid for our opponent. Okay. That would have been good if we didn't have a Fable Passage. Well, I'm just going to run this straight into Paradise Druid. There's no way in hell they have a block, and if they do, I'm fine with it. Alright, then we'll pass. And they've got four mana to work with. It would have been amazing to get down Firemind's Vessel into Athreos here, but it's not meant to be. Yeah, it's going to be the Guardian Project. Question is, do I kill Paradise Druid here? And I kind of think I do. Yeah, I think it's worth doing. Destroy a creature with no counters on it. And then we'll despark Guardian Project. Our opponent, honestly, could potentially just explode from that point. Which would be amazing. Don't know if it'd happen, but... There's only one way to find out. Let's get rid of the Guardian Project. And swing for one. I think I'm going to village rights here just to find some better draws than an Alcide. And, well, they're all they're all right. They're not ideal. A land would have been better. I like making land drops. It allows me to play the game I like so much when it likes me. Omen of the Hunt. Okay. Land. 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 It's a guild gate. Uh, that's also fine. I mean, we get to Firemind's Vessel. We've got Athreos coming down next turn. Presumably. As long as our opponent doesn't have naturalize effects. Opponent's reading our card to find out whether or not it resolving is a good or a bad thing. Hmm. Do you have the answer to it? Maybe they're also wondering whether or not Yarok synergizes with uh, Athreos in any way. If I was to put a coin counter on Yarok, for example, would that be a problem for them? No Scryland. Interesting. Alright, well, I am going to kill Yarok here. It's just how do I want to do it? This would only leave me with two mana, which I can't really do, so I don't think I want my opponent getting any Yarok value. Um, perhaps just an Elspeth Conquers Death is fine here. Get rid of Yarok. It allows me to hold up and Murderous Rider then for a follow-up. Hmm. Yeah, Yarok is exceptionally powerful, so... Her opponent definitely wants it in play. And I definitely don't. They might explode at that. I have answered most of their stuff quite consistently here. Alright, now it's time for Athreos. And we pass. We have nothing to put coin counters on, but that's fine. Eventually we can put coin counters on Cavalier of Dawn, and then it will be miserable for them. Ooh, we can put it on that. Nice. That's a deep dwelling. Please don't have... It's dead now. Please don't have Agent of Treachery in your deck, opponent. I value you as a human being right now, but that could quickly change. <laughs> I'll seed with a counter on it for our ECD. Can't really get rid of Thassa, so we'll just go for Basilica Bellhaunt here to activate our Athreos for some swinging. Make our opponent discard. Why haven't they banned Agent of Treachery in Brawl yet? I can, I can answer that. It's because they actually don't play Brawl. They Nobody who is in charge of the bannings of this format actually plays the game. It's become very clear to me. Uh, let's get... I can't really get Thassa out of here, but Thassa would be a great one if I could get it out of here. For now, I'll just go for the Basilica Bell Haunt, because if it dies, then I get to return it. So our opponent wiping the board, for example, would be uh, not in their best interest. They would actually discard cards. Disinformation campaigns. Sad. Unfortunate. Yeah, they discarded... Um, uh, they banned, sorry, Ruined Halo 
And I have never, ever seen that card being played. Ever. And they banned it. It's just the weirdest thing ever. It blows the mind. All right, so they can flicker a creature. They choose not to. Smart plan. Kaya's Wrath. Not exactly great, but it is what it is. So I think we just all, all attack here. We can't really afford to let our opponent get more Field of the Dead tokens going. We've got to keep that pressure up. Keep our opponent's life total nice and low so any kind of swing is going to be good for us. If we can set up a situation maybe where the Alcide can sack the Athreos to give it unblockable, that'd be grand. So some easy blocks for them. Just going to take five. Dune to eight. Uh, we will end the turn. And I will put a counter on Alcid. For now. Alright, sacks the Omen of the Hunt to do some scrying. If they top, it's because they found Agent of Treachery and they win. I guess I could uh, flicker Alcide and then on end step I actually get to steal their Agent of Treachery with a coin counter potentially. Ooh. Ooh, if I could turn it on them, that'd be amazing. One top, one bottom. Yeah, I do have the protection from blue with the Alcide, thankfully. Oh, I hate that counting of mana. Mass manipulation, maybe. It's also a card I'd rather not see. Yeah, this looks like mass manipulation. One of my other favorite cards of all time. Or, it's a I'm counting how many things I can tap option, which is fascinating. Well, let's go. Start the tapping, opponent. Start the tapping. If I give protection from... Oh, the Leaf Kindred actually kind of makes things awkward. I was going to say I could actually... Start sacking things here, or sacking Alcide to give protection twice over. But I need the protection from blue to stop Thassa tapping down stuff, and I need the protection from green to actually deal combat damage. So it's a little bit awkward. Um, so they pay four to go for another tap. I have five coming at them. Yeah, I think I'll just make them do this all over again. So I'll sack Alcide to make Athreos protection from blue so he doesn't tap. I don't want to go too hard on this though because I do kind of want to put a coin, coin counter on Alcide on end step so we can actually protect ourselves from Agent. Sublime Epiphany. Wow. Okay, well, that's the thing. Get swinging. Bono goes to five. They actually uh, fizzled our Alcid as well because it has no target anymore on the sack. Um, I will... Put a counter on, I guess, my Murderous Rider. Yeah. Uh, I believe the coin counter is a replacement effect for this dies trigger, so I can choose which one basically goes on first, so it'll return and then the dies trigger will happen, but I think that's okay. I think that's fine. A 
Lanawar Visionary. All right, Thassa has a thing to flicker on end step. Anything two mana is effectively free because of the Leafkin Druid's uh, ramp ability. Looks like they're just going to hold back, though, to try and not die again. Which is fair. God, Thassa, please. Can I draw an answer to you? Witch's Oven. Can't say it's really an answer, but we'll go for Midnight Reaper pre-combat. Go Witch's Oven. So now we can start using those coin counters a little bit more effectively. Let's go to combat. Opponent starts the tapping train. If they had no cards in hand, we could actually use Basilica Bellhorn and Witch's Oven to... We're getting in. Uh, to basically draw step them. Killing Basilica Bellhunt and making it re-enter. But they're actually doing quite well for card advantage with this particular deck. Alright, so we're taking out the token version. Appears our opponent's got some more stuff to do. Oh, tap for Midnight Reaper, sure. Alright, I will still go for the Basilica Bell Haunt here, because I'm going to need to put a counter on something, and... Lanawar Visionary is not really on my to-do list for killing here. So, opponent discards. We draw, because Midnight Reaper. We hope for an answer, but we do not find one. So, we'll just play Solemn. Grab a land. Let's grab whatever. And turn Bellhorn into a, another Witch's Oven target. I actually think we might Wrath if our opponent plays Yarok. I think that would be worthwhile. Yeah, it's just basically a tap out here into Flick of Visionary to draw two. We'll swing first, I guess. There's really no reason not to. Mangara. And our opponent has had enough. Yeah, did we actually have lethal? Uh, we swing, we swing. Three, five, yep. Yeah. So, yeah, swinging first would be great. Alright, that was very close. I know our opponent was just digging towards Agent of Treachery because it's the only interesting card that they could have found, I'm guessing. Um... I do really hate Agent of Treachery, and I don't know why it's not banned, but Ruined Halo is, guys, so watch out. Even Three Fairy. Like, I really detest Three Fairy, but in Brawl, I don't really care. <laughs> I don't really care about Three Fairy. He's actually the least broken in this format, but he got the ban, because apparently his win rate was high, even though I barely see him. So, you know. Ugh, whatever. Rant over. Next game. All right, we are in, and this hand's acceptable. I think that's all you can really say about this one. We've got a Fire Mines Vessel, which can get us to the Athreos. Some removal. Something needs to be drawn that Village Rights is good with, but it's a good card otherwise. And we'll see how we do. Yeah, turn one Scarab Barons into Swamp opens up Grasp of Darkness for Mana Dorks. Who's also die tactics, which is nice. Our opponent's playing Grunk, Cursed Huntsman, 6 mana, 5 loyalty planeswalker. That is a great draw. Uh, you get to pay 0 to make 2 2 2 black and green wolf creature tokens. When this creature dies, you put a loyalty counter on each Grunk you control. Uh, we will go with our Chromatic Lantern. Looks like we're getting an early Athreos down, which can be very brutal for our opponent. Um, the minus three allows you to destroy a creature and draw a card, and then minus six, which you can only get to by killing your wolves, gives you an emblem with creatures you control, have plus three, plus three, and trample. It's a pretty cool commander. I like Grunk quite a lot. And I imagine they're playing it because of M21 Grunk. 
All right, opponent gets a free questing beast hit in. And we're probably just going to... I really wanted to play Viamine's Vessel, but it's just not an option. Uh, as it currently stands, it's basically we draw a land and we can Athreos with this hand. I don't know if we really want to just let Questing Beast run free. I mean, if we went Firemind's Vessel next turn, we could end step, put a counter on Questing Beast. If we drew a land, then we could kill it with the Grasp of Darkness and make it ours. All right, I'll take four. Getting a little bit too caught up in my life total being protected here. I think taking four is worth the risk of that turn being actually quite good. It's one way that we can attack Grunk without having to use our D-Spark, for example. And it opens up village rights. So yeah, we're going to take four. And I hope we draw a land. 42% chance of a good draw. Good stuff. All right. Absolutely never do that ever again. I know we've got Chromatic Lantern, but if our opponent deals with that with a variety of different means, it's not going to be great for us. Uh, we would like that to also be tapped down. I want essentially Grasp of Darkness open, regardless of what our opponent can do. We'll do that. It's like if the Assassin's trophied my Chromatic Lantern right now and we had our planes left open, we'd be miserable. Well, this is how we're going to do it. All right, so end step, we get to put a counter on Questing Beast. When Questing Beast leaves the battlefield, as long as Athreos is in play at the time, we own Questing Beast. So now if our opponent went with Grunk, uh, they would only make two twos and this can't be blocked by them. So good stuff. All right. So our opponent's probably going to make some dogs. Yep. And we are going to eat Questing Beast so that we own it. It's mine now. Field of Ruin. And swing at our opponent. Because Questing Beast's um, 84th line of text says if we deal damage to our opponent, it also deals it to a Planeswalker as well. And we really don't have to care about Grunk that much anymore because he can't minus and... All he can really do is make two twos, and if we draw a Massacre Worm, we're going to be laughing. Uh, I guess we'll try and do that, actually. Let's crack Cryptic Caves and see what we can find. Arcane Signet. All right. It's a fine draw. I don't think we despark Grunk. I don't think we have to. And we'll make sure that we own Questing Beast until the end of time by putting a coin counter back on it. So next turn, we could go for something like Realm Clot Giant, blow up the board. Questing Beast has haste because of part of its 89th line uh, line of text, if I remember correctly. I need to get the, uh, the rules book out for Questing Beast to make sure that that's the correct line that I'm quoting. Um, but yeah, essentially, I would wipe this board, keep my Questing Beast, and Grunk would go back to one on the attack. Which definitely has its value. Opponent's getting in. Well, we have no reason to care about this. Let's take one out. Grunk's still dead, so, you know, not much has changed here. So, send in Questing Beast at our opponent. It's got Murderous Rider, so in response, I think we'll take the opportunity to Village Rights. The Questing Beast. Bring it back under our control and we make it to draw a card. Fizzles the Murderous Rider, so that goes into their graveyard. Instead of giving the 2-3 lifelink. And from here, we'll probably despark Grunk. All right, QB back in play. Got Midnight Reaper. It's not a bad draw. I think that's what we're going with. Could just go Liliana Tick Up, but I don't really want 
that necessarily. Yeah, I think we just got Midnight Reaper. I guess we could do both. But I need to despark. Yeah, let's despark Grunk now. Counter on Questing Beast unless it's dead. Eliminates my Midnight Reaper. Deal. Ooh, bell haunt. That's a good one. Did I? I was gonna say, did our opponent just leave it in the in the trash? Then uh, we will go bell haunt here. I think. Yeah. Not sure there's a great deal of value in holding up and dire tactics necessarily. So our opponent discards. We gain three, which is actually quite needed. And then we'll make sure that Questing Beast doesn't die to a Grunk Minus. Yeah, our three us is a hell of a thing. Grim Tutor. Goes to find a card that can deal with this board state. Four mana remaining. Oh, five mana actually. Remaining. Something like a Casualties of War is kind of valuable. It won't deal with Athreos necessarily and won't deal with the biggest creature threat on board, but dealing with like Firemind's Vessels and things like that is also pretty valuable. Still a decent swing. Come at me, bro. Come at me. Coward. Coward! Alright, I will go with I think a Liliana here. So that if our creatures die during combat, then we get to draw some cards. We're going to tick up and make a zombie. And yeah, let's get to combat. Uh, I think we just triple swing in here. Let's get some of those wolves off the board, I suppose. Let's find out what they're tutored for, I guess, as well. Four mana. Just grabbed a murder. It's fair enough. I will draw a card. Takes Athreos out of combat. A lot of our devotion was held in that creature, unfortunately. And then they can't block the QB. The old QB. I wonder if I actually blow up the world here. It keeps Grunk off the boards. One, two, three, four, five. Potentially keeps... Yeah, I think I do blow up the board here. I draw two cards, keep my questing beast. I reset the counter on it as well. So, wolves not a problem. Murder Strider and Ugin, yeah. Huge value there. No grunk. Casualties of War requires a land, I think, to go off there properly. Um, and we've drawn an insane draw, actually. Double removal spell with Ugin and Murderous Rider, even if they had uh, the casualties of war there. I still have my questing beast because of the end step counter. I have basically the replacement Liliana with Ugin, and I can answer Grunk again, so easy. All right, guys. Well, I think that's going to do it for today's video. If you have enjoyed, then make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this in the future. It's a little bit harder. To make some brawl content, I feel like we've hit the logical conclusion with a lot of the uh, commanders. Some of them are just way too mediocre for me to bother with. Uh, I did Gadrak and it just turned out to be Badrak. So, you know, uh, we might be revisiting some old commanders. This one I actually fobbed off for a while and it's, it's pretty fun. I don't know if it's any better than I remember it being, but still pretty reasonable otherwise. But hopefully you've enjoyed. Hit the like button, subscribe, as I always mention. And uh, yeah. I'll see you all next time for some more Magic Arena. Take care.